defining functions. This is a quite an important story because we are doing functional programming. So imagine a very simple situation that our job is to calculate squares. Okay, so if, if someone comes and it's just asked that, oh, what is the square of number 13? So what is number 13 divide, um, multiplied by itself? Okay, it's 169. So fine, job done. The person is happy. We, we did the job very well. Then he comes back and asks that, oh, okay, I want to do something more complicated. So how about um, this number multiplied by itself? Okay, we can happily do that. It's getting a bit boring because I just did the same thing. And now comes um, the person again and it's like, okay, this time I want to do this number to be calculated, squared. And it's like, okay, I can do that. And it's like I calculated and it's like, whoa, that's maybe not quite right because I had to type this number twice and for the second time I messed it up okay so yeah that's not the one this is the one I guess okay we will see so the point is that typing the same number twice is error prone so you are likely to make a mistake okay so how can I do that well I can just give it a name using a let statement let call x to be the number one three one three one three okay and what do I want to do well I'm calculating the square so I just multiply it by itself let's see what happens and that happens to be the same. So yeah, actually our previous calculation was right. And now if um, I have to do this again, well, I can just copy it. My copy pasting is not a good practice in programming, but okay, this is not the, the final solution yet. Oh, and it's uh, <laughs> the final solution was on the clipboard. So I failed to, okay, let's just do control C. Okay, now it's fine. So my point is that if I want to have another number here, I just have to do it once. I don't have to type it twice. Okay, and um, well then I can, you know, um, do this one again. And just calculate it for another number. Okay, it's quite a big one. But something quite uh, extraordinary happened here. Because if you look at this sub-expression, this one, okay, in itself, if I just do that, in itself, that's meaningless. If I evaluate this, x hasn't been defined, okay? So I actually express the... Uh, the core computation, what I really want to do, the computational work, as an abstract expression, um, x has no meaning, so x, the meaning of x should, can, should come somewhere um, else. And that's, well, okay, it's uh, in the let statement, you, you, we bind that value. But we can do uh, something different here, because that's the idea of a function definition as well. So I create a function 
and x will be the input of the function and this is the uh, the body of that function if I evaluate that one okay now we have a function and now I can apply that to um, some number okay let's do it with 13 169 can use some other number okay so this reads differently remember how, how do we read this closure comes and it's like yes I'm going to um, do some work what is the work well it's defined within these parentheses oh it's gonna be a new function defined here and the input is X and what does the function do this calculation okay so what's the meaning of X here well, it's coming from um, the input of the function, which will be uh, this value. And um, yeah, so now we are quite happy to some extent because we don't have to type the same number twice. But uh, we can do better because if you uh, remember, the function is actually a thing. Yeah, let's just um, remove the function call. So this is a thing. Uh, I can give it a name. I can define as SQ, short for square. And if I evaluate it, well, it says that actually I have a new function. Now I can just uh, call that function. Okay, so how, how does this read? Well, uh, opening parent, so it's uh, some work needs to be done. What's the word SQ? What's the what's the meaning of F SQ here? Well, it's it's defined here. SQ is the function that takes x and returns uh, the square of x. Okay, so the meaning of x in this expression, when I call it here, it's going to be 13. It's coming from the caller. And I can call it with another number. For sure, yeah. Right, so functions are reusable. At this point, you know, I don't have to do the work um, for my customer anymore who wants squared numbers. I can just give it to him and it's like here is the uh, square function you can just use it yourself just one more thing that um, yeah we often define functions and of course it well it makes sense to put them into the um, long-term memory so we define a symbol for that so we often do this therefore there is a shorter form instead of um, defining square as a function we can say defin which is just defining the function and I don't need this parenthesis anymore so defining a function sq is the input the inputs are in a vector there can be more or there can be zero number of inputs and this is what the function does this is the body of the function and let's see what's the square of the negative one? Oh, that's one what's the square of two oh, that's four okay it works fine so these two defining square to be the function or just doing it in one shot using defin, it's exactly the same thing. So what we did um, here is that we had some repeating computation. So we did the same computation with different data values and we got bored of it. So we found that, oh, what's the abstract way of writing that computation? And then we just put it into a function. 
so the actual concrete values for each usage for each function call it's coming from the caller okay that's a that's a super important abstraction step and we will do this often and um, and again and again because this is well this is at the core of functional programming this is the functional abstraction okay